Hello, my name is Bijan Modrai. I'm the Professor of Vascular Surgery and Head of Section at King's College London and Guys and St. Thomas' NHS Foundation Trust. I'm delighted to have two esteemed colleagues with us here today. I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves in turn. Isabel? Hello, my name is Isabel van Herzeli. I'm an Associate Professor at Ghent University Hospital, Belgium. Um, and I'm delighted to be here and to be interviewed by Bijan. And Laurent. Hello, I'm Laurent Chiche. I'm a professor of vascular surgery and I'm uh, the head of the Department of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery, uh, a tertiary aortic center in Pitié Salpetrière Hospital in Paris. So I'm delighted also to be with you and then to participate at this round table around Lumi Guide. Okay, so why are we here? Uh, I think we're here to hear from two experienced aortic surgeons and a head of department, what their experience has been with the FORS technology. And uh, why, why do we need uh, to discuss this? Well, we're going to focus on complex aortic procedures. These are long procedures, multiple steps, and involve irradiating the abdomen and pelvis. And we know, uh, as the years have gone by, that this radiation is not without consequences. Our team has found evidence of DNA damage in both operators and patients as a consequence of these procedures. And the evidence is building that this radiation exposure may be associated with an increased instance of cancer. But we're going to go on to discuss all of these aspects. Isabel, let's start with you. Outline for us your experience as a complex aortic surgeon. How many years have you been doing it? What volume of procedures and what are some of the aspects that you can tell us? about uh, these procedures? Well, as you know, we're working at an academic institution and we get a lot of referrals, indeed complex cases. Some are referred because of open surgery, others because of endovascular problems. What we are facing is that increasingly we are treating patients by endovascular means. Everybody is indeed exposed to radiation and our nurses are getting worried about it because they are obliged to actually take these courses to know a lot more about the Alara principle, what it's all about, and how to prevent any harm. So they ask us, are there any opportunities how we can reduce our radiation and change our radiation safety behavior? What is the problem? At the moment, we're using X-ray. X-ray to visualize wires, catheters, devices. But that's been shown in a 2D image in a gray and white uh, color scheme. And it's sometimes pretty hard to identify the tip of a guide wire, a catheter, or to even recognize where all these markers are. Consequence is that we are pressing that pedal more frequently, we increase the dose, and that actually may cause harm not only to the patients, but most importantly, to our healthcare staff, which are young people. And that's a major issue we're facing. And do your trainees get involved in these procedures from a young age? Yeah, and that's even a, a, a bigger challenge because the trainees would like to have hands-on and they would like to try out new devices. But then the nurses are getting worried that they keep their foot on the pedal all the time. So how do we deal with that? That's another challenge. Thank you, Isabel. And Laurent, what is, what is your uh, experience in this space and what are your views? So... Our experience is probably different from other teams because we are a team which are really dedicated to open aortic complex surgery. And then finally, it appears when I, I had the, the, the keys of the service in the November 2020, I, I wanted to give a shift to the institution and then to uh, hire the number of uh, uh, complex endo uh, uh, procedures. And then for this, I hired Frederick Koschneck, Professor Koschneck, who came to, to, to work with us, and then we try to develop a very, very important uh, um, uh, setting for the endovascular surgery, even for peripheral, but also for aortic and complex aortic. And then we started from the beginning. That means that we had to create a new uh, lab, a new uh, hybrid oil, and then we were, for this, uh, helped by the, the Philips company. We settled a very nice uh, room. And then we try to uh, imagine how you could reduce the radiation dose and how we could, could reduce the, the time of exposure for the patient, for the, 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 the nurses, for the doctors. And then finally, it appears that the, the Lumi Guide could help for this. And then in November, uh, November 20 and 23, we, we began the, the program with the Lumi Guide. And then finally, now it appears that it's really 
a helpful tool and we use it in quite every complex aortic procedures and uh, probably everyone will be involved with in this program everyone from the from the team the main thing is that we had the very very large uh, um, uh, experience with open and now we begin to have a very large experience with complex aortic procedures that means we can treat from the aortic arch to the iliax using the lumiguide and then try to decrease the radiation exposure for sure Thank you, Lauren. That's very clear. So, Isabel, uh, what has been your experience and that of your colleagues for introducing force technology into your hospital for complex procedures, and how have you found using it? So, we start using it only in January 2024, and Dr. Morils, Natalie, she's the main driver, actually, of this whole program, assisted both by myself and Bernard Peters. And based on some experience of colleagues, we've uh, said, let's just work with one particular nurse to reduce the learning curve uh, and make sure that it's always the same operator to get experience on this. And we started off with an EVE or an IBD just to make it a little bit more, less complicated for ourselves, just to see how we could use the wire, the force guide wire and the 3D hub with catheters to cannulate the contralateral limb and hypogastric artery and that went fantastic. We were very excited. And next, we've mainly used it in complex or the pathology for fans, fenestrated cases, all elective cases. And some went really well. Uh, some were less well, but that was mainly due to complex anatomy of the patients. What we found mostly interesting is that you can visualize the guide wire very easily. It's now in yellow. And you can also choose different colors for the catheters that you normally use. And with the Lumiguide, with the 3D hub, you can decide which type of catheter you would like to use. And it gives you a 3D image of the catheter and wire. And it shows you exactly where you are in the patient's anatomy without having to step on the thoroscopy pedal. What we found most challenging is that it, you're so used to step on that pedal that we sometimes had to say to Natalie, you know, you're working with the Lumiguide. There's no need to step on the pedal right now. And the other ones of us are actually managing the imaging calibration, etc., so she can really focus on the technical part. So our experience have been mixed, but very excited by the technologies and really looking forward to move this further. So Isabel, you mentioned uh, full visualization of the full length of the wire and catheter. Can you go into a little bit more detail about what that has meant for the workflow and perhaps also for the rest of the team that are watching these procedures in the operating well, I, with you. Yeah, I think so. The main thing is so you don't have to move your C arm all the time. You can see exactly what you're actually doing. Uh, you are, of course, using your overlay imaging that we already were used to have. Uh, and then you can see exactly what your wire is doing. And if you're hitting tortuosity, an angulation, a synodic lesion, you can actually tell from the behavior of the wire, the curve it's taking, that you may run into trouble before losing access. So it actually gives you some feedback that you normally would not have. Uh, and that makes a huge difference for the team, um, for usage. Uh, and I think nowadays it's almost uh, unheard of, of of using normal wires and then all of a sudden you're back in gray and white and you have to adjust again. So I think the team just really embraces the technology from that perspective. Yeah. I mean, I've I've obviously identified with several points that you've both made. And if I think as to what force technology has brought to our practice, our hospital. I think the first thing is the wow factor, isn't it? As you've mentioned, being able to visualize what we're doing in, in 3D, I think that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I think the fact that we can view the anatomy in a multiplanar mm -hmm. way is also a conceptual advance. So, you know, if I think about cannulating mm -hmm. a superior mesenteric artery, the fact that you can do that in the anterior... Yeah posterior position not have to angulate the c-arm as we used to do that obviously saves on radiation it makes you confident that your your the wire is progressing in in the way that you would like so i think that those are probably uh, uh the the two things that for me are a real conceptual advance as far as force is concerned so laurent uh i think isabel touched on what force technology means to staff and patients. What is your experience? So how have your staff, uh, how do they view force? And tell me if you've had any reactions from patients. Do you think it attracts 
patients have the procedures done by force? What is their uh, reaction to force? Yeah, I think that as I told you, we, we now count uh, as a very um, important team for these complex endovascular procedures. That means that several patients are referred to the center just because we have a very nice uh, room and then because we have the technology and the, the physicians that uh, are able to do this kind of procedures. And then finally, some of the, the surgeons who refers the patients to us, they like to come and then to, to touch with us the, the, the procedure. And then finally, they are really amazed by this imaging of the catheters, the colors, as Isabel said, and then also the fact that you don't have to move the C-arm, and then it looks like really easy to, to, to navigate in three dimensions like this. And then even for the, the doctors who send us the patients, they are also vascular surgeons, but they don't have the, this technology, and even they sometimes don't have any hybrid room in their institution. So when they come in our hybrid room, which is something like a 90 meter squared hybrid room, really nice and new and then they have this kind of technology and they are really amazed by the the way of doing and uh, uh, it looks like simple to, to, to do it but for sure there is something like a learning curve uh, if you want to avoid any injury to the arteries if you want to avoid losing time in uh, uh, procedures which would be probably more easy with a, a, a single ter a guide wire like this and then we try to select the not only the, the, the patient, but so also the anatomies and the cases. And then we, start, we started only with the, the first procedure was a fever procedure, in fact, not uh, with the AB, it was directly a fever. And then we tried to use the Lumi guide for the whole procedures, not only for one or two arteries. We tried to make it for everything. Mm -hmm. So probably even for the, the team also, there will be a growing experience with all these uh, uh, attempts of cannulations, using the cat and the visualization of the cats, exchange of the wires, which takes a, a little time at the beginning of the experience. Probably the, exp the, the first procedures are quite longer than we expected. And so we think we have a good feedback from the team and from the referent doctors that come to the procedures. Thank you, Laurent. And if I think about our own learning curve, when we introduce falls, there's a lot in what you've said that I identify with. Actually, what I was uh, surprised with is the workflow was quite intuitive and um, quite easy to pick up initially when it comes to you know how do you set up the equipment how do you register the catheter and wire um, you know I thought at first that, that would take a few uh, yeah. few few goes to to get that down to a T but actually that that was quite intuitive um, and I think you're right I think as time goes by you learn how force performs best in which anatomies it performs best at this stage and you can see how the iterations that that, that will come uh you know there will be future generations of uh, force wires and and you can see how you know it will apply to much uh more uh you know advanced anatomies as time goes by so I think that's one thing that we've learned and, uh, you know, it just doesn't add any time to the procedure for us now yeah. uh, because, you know, it's all those nuances that you learn as you, as you go along. Yes, and, and probably we are also we are lucky to have the, the release of the second version of the hub and then finally, uh, from the beginning of our experience, we uh, uh, know now we have to uh, make the selection of all the, the catheters. We use these catheters regularly and then finally we can calibrate it. And then now the, the team is really used to make this calibration at the beginning of the procedure. And then we select from one cat to the other one. So it's really easy to deal with during the procedure. And then finally, this does not lose any additional time now for now. Absolutely. So I think that speaks to the iterations that yeah. are coming. We're not lucky enough to have had the second version <laughs> yet, but perhaps soon. So on that, uh, on that note, uh, where do you both see the future of endovascular surgery developing? Where do you see the major advances and what are your views on that? So perhaps we could start with Isabel. I think this is already a very revolutionary technique. I think if we can indeed reduce radiation dose by using light instead of fluoroscopy to visualize what we're doing within our patients, combining it with the pre-op CT scan, that you're actually navigating almost like a, a kind of a tracking system throughout the anatomy. It will make everything not only safer, 
because you're using less radiation, probably also quicker, and you will be better prepared. And now we use it mainly in challenging aortic cases, but I can imagine that in renal and visceral artery disease, this is also going to become golden standard and also in complex aortic disease. So any type of pathology where we know we use quite a lot of radiation, uh, I think what we are still waiting for is indeed probably a slightly longer guide wire. I think that's what we're sometimes struggling with, but I know that's on the way. Uh, and maybe also some of the features of the guide wires. Uh, but that I think it's what we have now with the Lumi guide, being able to use any type of catheter we normally use in combination with the guide wire makes a huge difference um, and allows us to, to work efficiently. And I think, I hope that the whole um, revolution will continue and that Philips will continue investing in this technology and that together with the clinicians who are using it, we can improve the system and make it worldwide available so we can really treat every patient safely and also protect the healthcare of our staff. Thank you, Isabel. And Laurent, what are your views? Why did you decide to partner with Philips on this initiative? It's, uh, I would say it's a long story. <laughs> the, the, uh, to choose uh, this partnership with uh, Philips is a long story, but uh, as I told you, we, we started from the beginning and then we had to create our own environment of uh, uh, and the workflow for all these procedures. So I think that one of the, the, the things I had in mind is that I wanted to be accompanied by, this, by a company and uh, I would say from the beginning, and that it's a win-win situation. I mean that we can bring something to the company and they can bring something to us. And then for us, the, the room was totally new. There was no hybrid room before. And then we had to create this, uh, this way together. And then finally, we realized, that we realized that Philips was quite, I would say this, I don't know if it's politically correct or not, but it was quite late in vascular surgery, in the field of vascular <laughs> surgery. And then we considered that we had a lot of patients, we had a lot of uh, uh, dynamic in the team, and then we could probably give our inputs in this situation to make it a very win-win situation. And then we decided to, to go with them, and especially because they had a lot of ideas, very good ideas like this, especially with the Lumigai technology. But for us, it's also the intracite technology, the vessel preparation, and also... So we decided to go for a global uh, setting around on the vascular procedures with only one company. And then it was really, really for us, uh, I, I think it was a good choice because uh, now we are facing a lot of situations and Philips is always there to support us and then to try to make it, uh, to, to, to give uh, an advance regarding this kind of technologies. So we are really proud of it and we try to make it uh, know everywhere we, we want to, to, to spread the, this uh, message everywhere that Philips now is really engaged in the field of vascular surgery. Okay. Well, uh, Isabel, uh, Laurent, uh, I've really appreciated this discussion and your expert insights into both complex aortic surgery and the force technology as you've you started uh, to use it. And I hope that we can reconvene in, in several years' time to, to get a touch base on how the technology's moved on and perhaps at some stage how it's standard of care. 